While the feds were pushing out COVID relief cash to companies during the pandemic, opportunists defrauded the government out of billions of dollars by lying about their needs. Now a high profile Phoenix business owner who once ran the state's largest special needs clinic is charged with COVID loan fraud and she's facing the possibility of serious jail time. 12 News journalist Joe Dana finds that despite that, she remains a contractor for the Department of Education. Joe? COVID loan fraud is not a victimless crime. Taxpayers remain on the hook for paying it back years into the future. 1,200,000, 150,000, and it goes on and on and on. A criminal indictment against the woman who once ran a special needs service empire in the Valley alleges she stole over $2.9 million through nine companies she has in her name. Can you please ask her to contact us? We first revealed Bridget O'Brien's suspicious COVID loans in 2021. In a brazen move, the same month O'Brien began collecting COVID bailout funds, she bought this nearly $2 million Biltmore home. At the same time, she still owed therapists who did contract work for her. People were not getting paid for months and months. This indictment, the latest chapter in a truly bizarre journey for O'Brien since we began investigating her in 2018. It's incredible in the negative way the impact that she had. At that time, we brought to light evidence of fraud and non-payment of social workers. I want my money, that's it. I don't wish, I don't have any bad feelings toward her. And the state cut off Medicaid payments to her company. Then in 2021, O'Brien was caught on surveillance camera stealing a dog in front of the owner's yard. She pleaded guilty to theft. It's amazing to get Max back. For years, former coworkers and therapists accused O'Brien of lying about a cancer diagnosis to avoid her obligations. Is there a reason why she hasn't been able to provide direct documentation of cancer treatment? Your facts are all wrong, Joe. She had a legal heavyweight defending her in court. Her attorney, former attorney general and current state superintendent Tom Horn, a longtime acquaintance of O'Brien. Now, the indictment claims O'Brien used one of her companies, Kids A Therapy, to steal $340,000 in COVID funds. That company remains listed as an authorized tutor for the Arizona Department of Education. And that means it's eligible to receive even more COVID funds. Now, I've asked Superintendent Tom Horn, given O'Brien's history of alleged Medicaid fraud, non-payment of contractors, dog napping, and now this 20-count criminal indictment, whether he thinks O'Brien should be removed as a contractor for the Department of Ed. Horn tells me in a written statement, Miss O'Brien is entitled to her day in court. O'Brien is due back in court next month. She has pleaded not guilty. On. An OC man is accused of taking millions of dollars from the government and spending it on exotic race cars. Investigators say he went to great lengths to cash in on the business program. KCAL 9 Orange County reporter Stacey Butler with how they say he pulled off the scheme. A Ferrari, a Bentley, a Lamborghini, millions of dollars worth of sports cars purchased with your tax dollars, the feds say, by a scam artist who defrauded a pandemic relief fund. Instead of using the money like a legitimate business to, um, you know, help the business stay afloat. Instead, what's alleged is that he used the money for his own personal expenses to take lavish vacations and to purchase three luxury sports cars a Bentley, a Ferrari, and a Lamborghini. Investigators say last spring, 38-year-old Mustafa Kadiri applied for $5 million in PPP loans and got them. They say he used fake companies. He even had four business addresses in Newport Beach, websites online, and social media pages. But all of it, say investigators, were fake. Earlier this week, a federal grand jury indictment that was returned charges Kadiri with bank and wire fraud, identity theft, and money laundering. The number of businesses that closed over the last year plus, uh, the number of people hurting out there, and, you know, that there are unscrupulous actors who um, take advantage of, you know, what's a government program supposed to help people. The people who truly needed help are reacting. Melody Bridges has a dance studio in the San Fernando Valley. She got a loan and barely survived. It, it angers us. We we had to go through so much stress to get the PPP loan. Without it, we would have gone under. The government, I think, had to work so hard to try to help small businesses like ours stay afloat during this incredibly challenging time in the world right now that everyone's going through. And to take advantage of it just I think creates massive problems for anything like this to happen in the future or in times of trouble. He's being held on $100,000 bail. A jury trial is scheduled June 29th. 
In Irvine, Stacy Butler, KCAL 9 News. Senator Biden says that he wants to crack down on those taking billions in fraudulent PPP loans. And in a case in Charlotte, it could set the precedence in the Queen City and across the country uh, as Queen City News reporter Will Lewis is live in Uptown tonight. Will, one of those defendants actually spoke out tonight. What can you tell us? Well, that's right, Alicia. He did. He spoke to Queen City News Chief Legal Correspondent Seema Iyer, and he said next week the whole world will know the truth. Now, two defendants are currently facing charges of allegedly taking $1.7 million fraudulently in PPP loans. Now, of course, like you said, the verdict in this case could set the precedent for many more. Seven days ago, President Joe Biden put people on notice. The watchdogs are back. And we're going to go after the criminals who stole billions of relief money meant for small business and millions of Americans. The crackdown on fraudulent paycheck protection program loans in the crosshairs of the Department of Justice. Cases that have started to play out in the Queen City with opening arguments in the case of La Shishka Bob Restaurant. The government alleging Azette Freydick and his son Tariq obtained $1.7 million fraudulently. The government claims false applications were submitted by three companies, including La Shish Kebab Restaurant and La Shish Catering. We've been stuffing in the pain and it's about time. Next week, the whole world is going to know the truth and justice will prevail. Queen City News Chief Legal Correspondent Seema Iyer in the courtroom and speaking to one of the defendants as he left the federal courthouse. I are saying this case could set the precedent for others facing similar charges given the words of the president and the track record of prosecutors in the Western District of North Carolina. Other federal prosecutors sometimes don't go after the small guys, but here in Charlotte, they go after everybody. They try a lot of cases here. The government says they have retrieved 1.3 million from the Lashish Kebab case and the feds will be looking for more. There's no crime that's too small. Why would you not prosecute even someone who, let's say, filed a false document for a $500 loan? Yeah, and that potential landmark case continues here at the federal courthouse tomorrow, and Chief Legal Correspondent Seema Iyer will be inside to bring you all the latest developments. For now, reporting live in Uptown, Will Lewis. Queen City News. Hot bellies returned $10 million in paycheck protection program loans. The company took heat because the PPP loans were designed to help small companies. Yet there are plenty of questionable small businesses who got the free federal funds too. And um, when our Jermont Terry started digging into the data, the math just didn't add up. He's live in South Suburban Markham with this exclusive report. Jermont. Erica and Brad, in my hand is a list of every licensed business here in the city of Markham. You can see it's just a couple of pages long, but I'm gonna pick up this stack. It is heavy and several hundred pages thick. These are the names of every business that received a PPP loan of your tax dollars here in the city of Markham. Now they all say they're running a business here and the city of Markham says, if that's the case, then we need our share of the money. A quick glance around South Suburban Markham reveals signs of economic growth. The nation's largest Amazon robotic fulfillment facility operates here. It's generating jobs and much needed revenue. We have some good momentum going because of Amazon is here, but we also focus on our small businesses as well. Yet here on 159th Street, you can still find this, plenty of vacant storefronts available for small businesses to move in. A prime opportunity, perhaps, for the more than 1,000 small business owners who applied for and received taxpayer-funded loans through the Federal Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP. The goal to help businesses stay afloat during the pandemic. There's just one problem. These businesses are questionable because we don't know about them. It's Derek Champion's job to know which businesses are operating in Markham. Individuals saw an opportunity and they took advantage of it. It all started when CBS2 started digging into data from the federal government about PPP loans. Something immediately stood out. If taxpayers pump nearly $28 million into local business loans, how are there still so many empty storefronts? We don't understand how could Markham have this many businesses and we're not seeing applications come through. 
According to the data, 1,733 loans were paid out to people who say they run businesses in Markham and should have these city stickers confirming that. There's just one problem. City records reveal only 311 businesses are licensed to operate in Markham. That leaves 1,422 that got PPP loans unaccounted for. If you really had 1,422 legitimate businesses op operating within all these zones, you should have way more money coming in. Uh, a lot more money. The bottom line is what when you see this list? When I see that list, it's letting me know that something is going on. We thought the same thing. So we started digging. Our first discovery, the vast majority of people granted PPP loans in the name of small business run these businesses from homes, which makes sense for some. Yeah, if you're hey, a tax uh, consultant, not, not an issue. Right. But what about this? Hey, how you doing, ma'am? Hey, I'm with Channel 2 News. I'm trying to sign up for the fitness sports complex that, that's here. Okay. Um, where do I sign up? I have no idea. Uh, are you familiar with it? No, I'm not. <laughs> they have this listed as a sports complex. Mm. And is this a sports complex? No, it's just a house. It's just a house? And there's no, there's nothing in the basement or anything no, of I that mean, nature? Have a basement. There's clearly no fitness center operating in the middle of this residential neighborhood. Yet the man who previously lived here managed to get $20,000 of your tax dollars by simply applying for a PPP loan. Oh, you didn't get any of the money, right? No, I haven't seen him. He, he left here last year, last I want to say, yeah. Okay. So is this coming as a shock to you? A little bit. When the person that operates this business received $20,000 from the government and having the applied a single dime towards the city of Markham, that is a clear indication of what to you? Fraud. We know for a fact that any kind of sports fitness business is not even allowed on this particular block. And it doesn't stop there. Do you see a hotel or motel here? Records show the owner of this farmland in Markham received two PPP loans for a total just shy of $50,000 to keep a hotel running. That's a lot of green to keep goats fed considering that's all we spotted here. And then there's this. Let me introduce you to Markham police officer, Kenneth Muldrow. Officer Muldrow, how you doing? Jermont Terry with Channel 2 News. Even though he tried denying he's Officer Muldrow. I want to ask you- I'm not Officer Muldrow though, but- uh, You are. Uh, no, no, not, uh, what uh, you need? I, I he's the same Kenneth Muldrow who applied for and received $20,000 of taxpayer money to keep his landscaping company going during the pandemic. Look here. 16313 Kedzie is the address listed on the loan application. The same address as the Markham Police Department. I'm trying to figure out why your lawn care service is not registered as a licensed business with the city of Markham. Can you explain yourself? <laughs> I don't have a, a lawn care service. Well, you got a PPP loan that was paid out for $20,000 uh, back in March. So if you don't have a lawn care service, who, who does? And it, and it was registered here to the police department, sir. That was the end of my conversation with Officer Muldrow. While he didn't want to explain any further with me, he will have to explain to someone. We're putting him on notice. The city says if any of these are ghost businesses, it's time to pay up. All told, the business owners listed on these PPP loan applications owe nearly $600,000 in unpaid business license fees, if they are legit. We want to make sure that we're regulating these businesses and we're aware of these. The mayor of East Point is charged tonight in a case of alleged corruption involving COVID relief funds. Mayor Monique Owens is accused of lying on an application to get thousands of dollars for a business she owns. Seven Action News reporter Brett Cast is in East Point now with the case against her and why she is no stranger to controversy. Well, this is not the first time that the mayor has faced criticism, but in the past, it's been from residents about comments and behavior at city council meetings. This time, the allegations are far more serious, and they're coming from the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office. What I consider to be outrageous claims. You're not going to I sit here and no assault me, lady I never met. I am don't so call my name because I don't know I what book you're world. reading, and, and I don't care. This is East Point Mayor Monique Owens at a city council meeting back in September arguing with residents during public comment, not letting them speak. Eventually, the city council walked out and the story made headlines. She's already proved she's going to do what she thinks she can do and what she can get away with. She's already said she's the mayor. 
Harvey Creech is a proud East Point resident of 50 plus years, upset to learn the mayor is now in the news again. We don't need it. We don't need any more publicity than what we've got right now. This afternoon, Mayor Owens was arraigned on a charge of false pretenses, a five-year felony, accused of lying on a COVID relief application in 2020 and receiving a $10,000 CARES Act grant from Macomb County. The charges come about as a result of obtaining these funds uh, on the application process as well as um, some of the information that was provided that wasn't true. Prosecutor Peter Lucido says the grant was for an LLC Owens owns. According to public record, the mayor has four businesses in her name. Do you know what exactly she said that was a lie or was not true? And, uh... Well, I'm not going to get into the details in specifics because the case is still pending. But in generic wise that, you know, she's made false statements of fact on an application. Owens is due back in court next month, and Lucido says the office continues to make corruption a focus. Residents say they want answers. If she is ended up being found guilty on a five-year felony, uh, what do you think should happen to her as, as mayor? She needs to be removed, simple as that. She's innocent until proven guilty, but unfortunately, you know, when it is a high-ranking official, such as an elected official, it shines a lot more light and more, you know, more of the questions are asked of it. And we did attempt to reach out to the mayor herself, but have not yet heard back. The next city council meeting is scheduled for March 21st. When COVID hit, jobs tanked, small businesses collapsed, families suffered, and millions of paychecks just disappeared. The government was quick to pour out more than a trillion dollars to restore a collapsing economy, but the scammers and fraudsters quickly caught on, as did the Secret Service. Tonight, our bill list takes a closer look as the Secret Service set out to find millions of dollars that disappeared. As billions of dollars started flowing out in COVID-related paycheck protection loans and unemployment benefits designed to rescue struggling businesses and help those who lost jobs, millions of dollars ended up in the hands of fraudsters and scammers. They were all prosecuted from the Northern District of uh, Georgia. At the forefront of hunting them down, the Atlanta Bureau of the Secret Service charged with protecting the nation's financial system and headed by Chief Agent Stephen Basil. This type of fraud is a very high priority for our agency and in our office we have approximately 15 to 20 agents that investigate it on a full-time basis. The big question is, how did all this financial fraud gain momentum? The Secret Service says electronic filing. The programs were not set up to verify the identification and that's what allowed the, fra uh, the fraud to continue. The electronic aspect of it expedited it. Basil says the priority was getting the money to those in need quickly. There was a lot of things that happened so quickly that they thought they had it under control and the oversight just was not there. Take the case of Khadidra White. The Secret Service says she electronically filed false unemployment benefit claims using stolen identities in three states and operating from her home in Clarkston. In one month, she netted over a million dollars. They say she bought a new car, ended up spending almost half of the money before she was arrested and sentenced to federal prison. And since the onset of COVID, the Secret Service has already cornered 13 people, recovering more than $3.6 million in PPP loan money. Ten more have been taken into custody in unemployment benefit fraud, recovering another half a million dollars. The agency says it has 40 additional cases now pending with much of that stolen money already recovered.